Oh, okay. I hope this video doesn't suck. Well, <laughs> all my videos suck, but I hope it's watchable. This is my second time through. Um, the first one, oh man, I'm okay with a little bit of tiltage. I have to be. Uh, but dang, unless you had uh, your kitty cat or your dog laying in your lap with one side of your laptop resting on him, it would have made you seasick, man. So I deleted it. So let's try again. Um, <clears throat> I'm not YouTube-y. I'm not a YouTuber. And I have no intros. Let the lizard be your intro. Merry Christmas from the lizard. So the first thing we have to talk about before I wind the onion, and this is the last thing we need to talk about, is the number of turns in the primary. Okay. Now I want to talk about why I choose to use three turns instead of two. So this is my spreadsheet I wrote. And by the way, I'm using a, a screen recorder for Linux called Simple Screen Recorder. Um, I, I'm currently running Mint Linux 18.3 on this machine. I'm running version 19.1 on my other machines. So I had to install it via PPA. If anybody runs Linux uh, and you want to install something by P via PPA, let me know. So this is a section where I want to talk about the various cores I've used and the number of turns in the primary. I originally wound my first Anon using this FT24043 core and I wound it with two turns in the primary. And I want to show you something. So that should produce an inductance of 4.3 microhenries. Okay, I'm going to copy that. Now, let's look at the inductive reactance. When you're using a broadband transformer, you want the inductive reactance to be at least 10 times that of the source impedance. Your source impedance is the 50 ohms of your radio. In the ideal world, we would see an inductive reactance for that core of 10 times that, or 500 ohms. And that is assuming that that, uh, that loading is a pure resistance. We're talking about reactance here. Um, believe it or not, some may argue this, but they'd be wrong. Reactance can't dissipate heat. <coughs> the resistive component of it can, but the uh, reactance is an imaginary unit. Anyway, that said, I'm going to, uh, let's say we're going to be using that uh, core, 80 meters will be our lowest frequency, okay? Now if I paste, what did I do? Number, okay. So you can see the disaster happening here you would want to see an inductive reactance of, in the ideal world, 500 ohms or greater. Look what we have. You know what that means? If that were a pure resistance with no antenna wire connected to the core at all, you'd see an SWR of less than 2 to 1. Your, uh, your broadband transformer is now turned into a load. And it's not that bad because again this is not a pure resistance this is an inductive reactance but it's indicative of a problem and that's why I started exploring three turn primaries okay the core we're going to be winding is this one the doubled FT14043 core and uh, let's I'm going to input two turns for each of the cores I wound, okay? So let's put two turns there, 
will put two turns for a single core FT140 and let me this is the my my little one that's wound with that blue stranded hookup wire the one I call little schmo that's an FT120 core or so I thought I looked at the Amadon website and they don't sell them they sell an FT12543 core so I created this entry in the spreadsheet for that and um, so I'm going to input two turns for that one as well and so using uh, it'll be even worse for this using an FT125 core with only uh, with only two turns man look at that you'd be looking at a standing wave ratio of what 1.25 to 1 that's a disaster man and again it's not that bad because that's a it's an inductive reactance but that being said you will have loading by your transformer and you want to avoid that at all costs so using a doubled FT Two four one <laughs> a doubled core a, a doubled FT one forty things will get a little bit better a little bit better you know now what are you looking at an SWR if that again man I want to point at my screen you can't see that for the first time I'm using I'm not using a camera so if that were pure resistance then you'd be looking at an a nest wr of three to one with no antenna connected again okay now then let's ch i'm going to change these from two turn primaries to three turn and we'll see what difference that makes by the way did i tell you i love the spreadsheet i freaking love the spreadsheet um okay so now then with our doubled FT14043 core I'm gonna copy that value you've seen this as low as what I forget what it was 68 or 78 ohms you know so now then using our doubled core and a three turn primary we'll see what kind of inductive reactance we have now I keep doing something wrong man that's better that's getting there um, if this were a pure resistance again, now what would you be looking at? An SWR of maybe 7 to 1 with no antenna connected. And it won't be that bad, but uh, what, what this does show is that even though this isn't pure resistance and the SWR really won't be that low, it'll be higher than that for all of these calculations we've just done what this does though is indicates how big of a difference there is in the loading effect of that um, transformer by the primary impedance so that's why I chose to use three turn primaries um, for this FT24043 core, uh, it's almost a necessity. Um, the higher the AL value, that's what this column is. This is the AL value of each of these cores, and my cores are all amidon. Um, some people swear by ferrite. I don't. I don't like ferrite cores. I like amidon. I like the polish. I like the consistency of the mix. <coughs> I like the beautifully beveled rounded edges that don't cut into your wire. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of like, I like Amadon, man. I've been doing business with them since, an, since the 1980s. But anyway, again, the higher the AL value, the more inductance per turn. And the end result is the, low, the less the loading. Higher the A value, less the loading. Okay? Rule of thumb. AL value of this single core 1075 AL value of a doubled FT140 core 1681 um, so there you go
that's my little talk on primary turns 2 versus 3 for the various cores. Uh, I was thinking about talking about power dissipation capability of these cores as well. But nah, not in that bit, not in this video. I've already done that in the past. Why, uh, I don't need to keep rehashing, reinventing the wheel and making it worse every single time. So I won't do that. <laughs> and I won't make another 48 minute video. Um, so this is my, uh, this core, I will say this. This is the core right here. This little 1.25 inch diameter core. Again and again, man. I, I keep saying that if you want to if you want to dump 100 watts PEP sideband into that thing, go for it, man. That's what I did testing that uh, my six foot high um, um, desperation antenna, uh, and we had a little chit chat. 100 watts full. Full power of my radio into my smallest stun on core. However, I will say that that was on the 40, the 20 meter band on its resonant band. Um, handled 100 watts PEP, no problem, man. Not a problem. And I've done plenty of testing with it using CW at various power levels. Again, no need to reinvent the wheel and try to uh, keep blabbing. So that's, that's that. That's that. That's why I use three turn primaries. Now I'm going to show one more thing. I want to show this. That is, there is one big advantage to using a two turn primary and that is you have far fewer turns on the core. And the big advantage in that using these little cores is Man, it gets busy on there in a hurry, you know. You run out of room in a hurry, man, especially if you don't want to, especially using a reasonable wire like the Teflon insulated stuff I love so much. Um, using a three-turn primary on an FT-140-43 core, like I'm going to be doing, like the one I chopped up, um, Man, I don't think I can get 27 turns on there. I can get 24 on there. Uh, but you know what? There is not a single one of these impedances, these transformation ratios that I'm willing to give up. I use them and I use them all. And the funny thing is, if there were one of those that I had to give up, the one I use the less, least, is the one people love the most, and it's the 49 to 1 I just don't use it, man, once in a blue moon, but when I have to, I might eliminate that one. No, I won't either. I'm putting them all on there. And you'll see when I wind it tomorrow, when I, not if, but when I run out of room right here, I'm taking these last three turns and stacking them. If I, stacking them where I have to, man, it's not a problem because I don't cross through the core. Because I don't cross through the core, this high Z winding, the high Z winding will be closest to the ground connection on the input and I can get away with a little bit of, I take a little liberty with the last couple turn uh, taps. So that's what I'm going to wind right there. Three turn primary. These are the number of turns. This is your impedance transformation ratio. I hope this uh, turned out, dear God. Tomorrow, um, tomorrow I'll sit down and wind the core. Seventy-three.